Right now, let me give you a concrete example. China has a great wall. We all know about that great wall. China's got a great wall. America wants to have a great wall. What we got is, in America, we got a northern neighbor called Canada, and we got a southern neighbor called Mexico. And for some reason, the Mexicans want to come to America all the time. And right now, we think we've got about 10, 15 million Mexicans that are undocumented. They're illegal immigrants in the United States. And so what we do is really smart. China's got a great wall. We're going to build a great wall. And so we're building a wall along the Mexican border. Now, somebody might mention to the American government that um, the Great Wall of China didn't work. They came around the end. <laughs> um, and that this Great Wall, that, that we would do, the Canadians aren't flooding into America. Um, but, but what we ought to do is you ought to take the money that you're spending on the wall and help Mexico, our neighbor, develop its economy, develop its, its assets, develop its whatever, its educational system. Do whatever we can to try to help Mexico become as good as neighbor as possible. Right now, the biggest trading partner for the United States is Canada. You know, that the relationship between Canada and the uh, and United States is a model in the world. And why can't we do that with, with Mexico? Isn't that a better way? So the whole idea is that if your neighbor does better, you do better. If, you're, if your kidney is doing great, your heart's doing great. And these two things are not, are not separate. This is, this is a, a fundamental wisdom in the tradition. Now, let's talk a little bit about these terms, and let's do it rather quickly, because the, the best part of this kind of, a, uh, of an event, I think, is, is the conversation that we can have. That we talk about this idea of Tao. And what we often do with the notion of Tao is again, we make it into a concept of God. The, the way and its power. That we make it into something that is very familiar to us, allows us to understand something. But what we're doing, in fact, is understanding ourselves and not understanding the Chinese tradition. And so when Aristotle tells us that when we look at something, we have to determine whether or not it's a thing, an action, a, a, a modality, or an attribute, um, that, that Tao must be one of these things. And so we call it the way. We make it into something that is objective, uh, something that is external, something that is a noun. But, but, but Tao doesn't work that way. Tao is a word like life, or experience, or culture. It's, it's something that has to do with the subject as much as it has to do with the, the experience that the subject has in the world. That Tao is, is one of these big words that will not allow for dualism, will not allow for the separation of subject and object, will not allow for this, the separation of modality. You have somebody who really cultivates themselves, who really is, is challenges themselves, then when they have experience in the world, that experience is magnificent, it's magical. Somebody who doesn't do anything, you know, their engagement with the world is not very interesting at all. And so this notion of Tao has as much to do with you as it does experience, it has as much to do with the modality of engaging the world, as it does with the world, whatever the world might be. And so, so, so this notion of Tao, we could call it the field of the human experience, the unfolding field of the human experience. Is it, is it mystical? Yeah. I mean, if you ever forget, I mean, one of the, one of the, the great uh, limitations in the human experience is you buy a new house and you walk around that house and it's just, it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you're doing all this kind of stuff, but then you finish it and six <laughs> months later you don't even notice it. You become indifferent. You take it for granted. Uh, we do that with each other as people, you know. We don't, we, don't, we don't remember sort of the magic of what it means to live every moment of our lives. And so this idea of the human experience, you know, is, it, is Chinese philosophy mystical? Well, the human life is mystical, and if we're coming back to ordinary experience and you're missing out on the mystery of the human experience, then you're, you're really missing something important. There is a, a numinous religious dimension to what it means to be a human being, and you've got to stay in touch with that. 
And so, so um, the, 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 this notion of, of Tao is, uh, is both what is most magical about the human experience and what is most ordinary. Everything uh, that we experience. You take something like a grandmother's love for her grandson. That is, is every day. That is commonplace. That is nothing special. And yet that is the most extraordinary thing in the human experience. So, so this idea of Taoism is about cultivating yourself to make the most of the human experience. To get as much out of the ingredients as you can. One of the, the pervasive metaphors of both Confucius and Confucian and Taoist philosophy is the concept of family. That family, in, in a Chinese way, in, in, in English, if I walk into the room, I say, everybody please stand up, everyone please stand up. Because we use the body, we use one, someone, anyone, no one. We individuate ourselves as a way of thinking. If I walk into the room and I speak Chinese, I would say, Da Jia Qing Jian Qi Lai. Big family, please stand up. Because in the classroom, it's Shifu, teach your father, or Shir Mu, teach your mother. And it's, it's Shui Di and Shui Shou, a student younger brother and student older brother. You know, that, that in a Chinese world, all roles and relationships are family. Why? Because family is where you give everything that you've got. If Alanis wants you to come and do some service for the institution, you've got to step up. You've got to, you've got to be part of the family. But if, you're, if your family says, we need you to come home, we need your time, we need your money, we need your kidney, then it's time for you to, to, to go home. That family is where you give everything that you've got. And so the strategy in this tradition is to say, number one, it's all about roles and relationships. Number two, family is the ground, is where we develop our, com our, our competence as human beings in these roles and relationships. And so, um, so the, the, the contrast, uh, what you have is you have the priority of process and transformation you have the idea that the human experience is provisional and processual. You have this focus on relations, the inseparability of this and its context, that, that this human experience is always being entertained from one perspective or another. There's no perspective outside of the human experience itself. It's being entertained from inside, being looked at, being enjoyed being challenged by different perspectives that locate us as, as, as a people. And so, it's genealogical, historical, biographical. It's all about emergence. That order, there's no God at, at the bottom. That Chinese is turtle's own way down. It's history, it's genealogical. The word for, for, for beginning in Chinese is, is shir. Is a woman and a womb. That, that, that beginnings are genealogical beginnings. And genealogical beginnings always have something that came before. So, so the, 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 uh, 